almost out of ammunition. That's <laughs> what happens when you have a 10 round magazine, unfortunately. Hey, thank you for watching. This is our video on home defense rifles. Now you've probably seen in our series, home defense shotgun, home defense revolver, and home defense semi-automatic pistol. This is the home defense rifle section, and so that's what we're working on today. Everybody loves these things, and as you can see, they're a lot of fun to shoot, and I can understand why. Let's check them out. What I have out on the table currently are some modern self-defense rifles. Now, we're gonna look at some surplus ones that could be used, and maybe some that aren't quite designed for self-defense but would work a little later on. So what we have here are three different types. There are others. I'm gonna start out with the one that is the most popular rifle, I think, in America, and that is the AR-15. And we're catching on things, but that's this one here, okay? Now, every time we go to SHOT Show every year, you, you get tired of seeing them after a while. There's so many because they're so popular and they're made by a, every manufacturer, it seems, makes them. This one happens to be a Smith & Wesson M&P 15 but you'll find them all over the map. And every possible design is made, length, caliber, style, and so on. They're called the Lego of rifles for a reason, because when you have one, you can kind of change it around and make it whatever you want it to be. This particular one is designed for self-defense. It's got a short barrel. Uh, it has a rail system. You could put an optical sight on it if you wanted to. The stock collapses for shorter and longer lengths of pull. There's a lot of different options with AR-15s. Now, if you live in a state that does not restrict these at all, these can be a wonderful self-defense rifle. If you live in California or New Jersey or one of the states that restrict these a lot, then you have a lot of limitations. Right now, we're in California, so this particular rifle has some limits because it has a grip on it that extends down and it has a flash hider and some other uh, features that California law doesn't like very much. In order to take the magazine out, first of all, I should tell you, you have to only have a 10 round magazine. You can't have any more than that. And if you put it in, you push the button to get it out, it won't come out. You have to use a tool like the tip of a, round, a bullet or a pen or something to push this thing and that'll let the magazine come out. Well, if you live in a state that's restricted like that, you might want to consider that before you buy an AR-15. If you need more than 10 shots, it's going to take a minute or two, or way too long in my opinion, to change out your magazine. Now these are awesome self-defense rifles, but with that limitation, they might make them a little less desirable for those states. You still might want to have one just because they're awful cool and they're fun, but I don't know. That's a decision for you to think about when it comes to would you want this to be your primary self-defense rifle in a state that's restrictive like that. So, we'll look at a couple of other options. Here we have the Mini 14. These things are extremely popular and there's a reason for it. They're a lot of fun and they just run like a Swiss watch. They're like the AR-15. They're extremely reliable. They're pretty darn accurate for a self-defense rifle. This is an old one. This one was built back in 1989, I think, and so the newer ones are better as far as accuracy is than this one is. Uh, this one is really accurate now because it's had some adjustments made to it. There's this thing put on here called an AccuStrut, and that helped a lot to keep the barrel from whipping all over the place. And then the stock has been bedded. There's been a little money put in this one, and so this one is very accurate. But, you know, you're, if you pick up an old one, realize that you can do those things, and it'll make them pretty darn accurate. It's extremely reliable, and because it doesn't have the pistol grip, Guess what? You can put the magazine in, and when you want to take it out, you don't need a tool, you can just take it out. Now this happens to be the five round magazine that came with the gun. Earlier when I was shooting it, we had a 10 round magazine in it. In this state, you're limited to 10 rounds. In other states, you can have 20, 30, it just depends on where you are. So this might be a fine rifle for you to look at. It's a Garand style action, or Garand is the way he actually pronounced his name. And so it's very reliable, very strong, and they're extremely popular for that reason. Just like the Air 15, they're kind of light and handy and short. Uh, real good self-defense rifle. This one is chambered in uh, 223 Remington or 556. Uh, and then you can also get them uh, in the Mini 30. They're, they're chambered in 7.62 by 39. A little bit more powerful ammunition. You have an issue though of over, over penetration with that, so be a little careful. And then we'll have a video on each one of these rifles when we get in depth with them later on. Another variety is the AK version. This is the an, an AK type action. Uh, you've heard of the AK-47, the AK-74, and so on. This is a Sega rifle. It's imported, um, and uh, they run really well. We've shot this one quite a lot, 
it is extremely rel reliable. I, I would say that you could probably fill it full of uh, cheese, fruitcake, or bread or anything else, and the stupid thing will run anyway. Uh, they're pretty easy to clean and very easy to fix. Uh, in some states, like California, they look scary and people don't like them because of so much news. But if you wanted it for self-defense or home defense or property defense, this is a great option. Again, in California, you're limited to a 10-round magazine, which is what this is. And this is the California legal version. You've probably seen them with a pistol grip down here and a grip up here and a flash hider and those kind of things. This doesn't have any of those because this is California legal and what it does is allow us to put the magazine in and if we want to just take it out and we don't have to worry about having a tool, a pen or a round or something to remove the magazine because this doesn't have any of the evil features that states like California don't like. So this might be an option for you if you live in California as well. It gives you a fully functional self-defense rifle without the, uh, you know, the illegal features, but, and therefore it doesn't limit you. You don't have to worry about changing your magazine if you need more ammunition. But you are still limited to the 10 round magazine in California, and there are some magazine limits in other states as well. So these are all very reliable self-defense platforms. It's really a personal decision as to which one you like the best. Uh, they all run extremely well. One thing I would say about self-defense rifles and carbines is that if you live in the city, you live in a major metropolitan area, we're in San Diego County, then you do sometimes have an over-penetration problem with a rifle. If you're shooting it inside your house, it may go through several walls depending on what caliber it is. It could very seriously injure somebody on the other side. The other thing is when you're in an enclosed building, if you don't have any ear protection, cranking off a high-powered rifle round is going to have everybody going, huh, for quite some time and doing some serious damage to your hearing. So if you employ this as a self-defense tool inside your home, you're, want, you're going to want to consider having some electronic uh, hearing protection for every member of your family, and that's going to take a little time to, to put on before you're able to use it. Now these are outstanding when you live out in the country. If you live out on a ranch or you're concerned about people coming onto your ranch that, that uh, have demonstrated a propensity for criminal activity or violence, great guns to have in your truck as you're traveling around the ranch or when you're working. If you have a farm or a large piece of property, these are great guns for that. Now, if you don't have one of these, can't afford one of these, don't want to buy one of these, but you have some other uh, type of rifle you might be interested in that might be a little less expensive or you might already own, it could be very positive for self-defense. It just might be an older style. We're going to clear these out real quick and put those on the table and look at those for you in just a moment. All right, we're back and we've got uh, some surplus, a couple of surplus military rifles here and that are very popular and there's a reason why they're very good and then I've also got a hunting rifle here that you can look at and you can figure out you know what if I was using this for personal protection these might work great and these would probably work really really well for property protection if you have a ranch or a farm or a large property so you have three here one is the M1 Garand or M1 Garand you'll hear it called uh, John Garand actually from what I understand pronounced his name Garand so we'll stick with him and that's what this is. This is the M1 Garand, the 30, car 30 caliber service rifle that was made famous in World War II and actually fought through many campaigns after that. This gun is uh, chambered in 30-06. Now the 30-06 of that day was a little less powerful than modern ammunition, but there are some modifications you can make to a rifle like this, particularly with the gas plug and other things that would allow it to shoot modern ammunition. Otherwise, you want to stick with the ammunition design specifically for the M1 Garand. And this particular gun does not have a detachable magazine. Nothing comes out of it. It has a magazine that's internal, which is in here, and then it's fed with these, which are called N-block clips. Now, this is actually a clip as opposed to a magazine, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, but this is called an N-block clip, and when you load it, it looks like that. And then this feeds inside the rifle here and goes all the way in. And if you've seen some old World War II movies, you probably heard the big <laughs> ping when this came flying out after the last round. And then you just stuff another one in there. Surprisingly, they're very quick to reload. And because it's a 30-06, it's an extremely powerful defensive weapon. If you happen to be out on uh, large property or something, this is going to reach out and touch someone much more effectively at a serious distance than say an AR-15 or a Ruger Mini-14 or something that's shooting a much lighter round. Now, 
another choice would be this, which is the SKS. This is a, a Russian design, and it is a semi-automatic fighting rifle. Both of these rifles were uh, used in war almost endlessly, and they're still found in various different conflicts around the world. They are extremely reliable, very rugged, um, and this gun is found in, uh, in various different countries, still, be, still being used by people to fight. It doesn't hold as much ammunition as the M1 Garand, but it is uh, very reliable. It's actually fed, fed with something called stripper clips, where you can just stuff them in through the top, and once it's done, you load it again. The magazine does not come out. You can see it there on the bottom. It's part and parcel of the rifle. And this gun is not quite as powerful in the chambering as the M1 Garand. This will shoots a 7.62 by 39. It's the same ammunition that is fired in the AK rifle we showed you in the earlier segment. Very powerful rifle. Uh, certainly good if you're hunting for deer sized game. And if you're on a farm or you need to be able to reach out a little farther, this is going to hit harder than the 223 or, or 556 shot in the uh, Mini 14 or the AR 15. And again, surplus rifle, if you might already have one or know somebody has one that wants to sell it to you, these are really good rifles. Be a little careful with these and make sure that you get one that's in really good shape. If you get a Russian version or some others, uh, they're really good. Sometimes you can buy one that's a, maybe pieced together or uh, from a different country, they don't work so well. So do a little research on the web before you buy one. But if you get your hand on one, they're really, really a good self-defense carbine. Now the last rifle I put here is just representative of deer rifles that are all around the country. This is a, a Remington 742 chambered in 30-06, or I'm sorry, this actually is, thir is 308 now that I think about it, but they also are found in 30-06 most commonly. Now the action doesn't stay open, so we put a chamber flag in here so you'd be able to see that we've cleared it and there's no ammunition in it. This is a very handy little deer rifle and they're used a lot for that, but notice that it's about the same size as the other two. So it's real handy and real short, and it's chambered for a powerful cartridge. Uh, this one is in 308. I've seen them in 30-06, and I've seen rifles made by other man or rifles made by other manufacturers very similar to this, used for deer hunting, and they hold five rounds. Not a lot of magazine capacity, but it does have a detachable magazine. And I have seen aftermarket 10-round magazines for this particular rifle. So if this is what you have, uh, you might want to. Keep it in the truck if you're traveling around the farm or around the property. Again, when you're talking about rifles chambered in 30 caliber, like this one, 308, 30 out 6, 7.62 by 39, they're going to penetrate through multiple walls. And so if you're shooting it inside the house, you're going to be deaf as a stump afterwards, and it's probably going to go through several walls. So it may not be the best choice for inside your home, but if you live out in the country, got lots of room, or you're just worried about the zombie apocalypse <laughs> or something like that, then something like the rifles we showed you before, the modern self-defense rifles, or something like this. If this is what you have or would like to have or can afford, uh, these will work very, very well for that too. Now, if you don't have any of these and you can't afford the modern sporting rifle, but you do have something else, maybe that'll work. Let's take a look at a couple of those. All right, the last ones we're going to look at are some that aren't designed for self-defense. They're not ideal for self-defense. They're super popular, and you know what? They'd actually get the job done uh, pretty admirably, it would seem to me, if that's what you got. So we'll look first at this. This is a 22 rifle. This happens to be a, a, a Marlin Model 60. Along with this and the Ruger 1022, they're probably the two most popular semi-automatic 22 rifles uh, in the country. There's a bazillion of these out there, and you probably got one. And if you don't, uh, you'll probably have one if you like guns, because they're just great guns. This particular one loads in a tubular magazine, so it loads through here, holds about 14 rounds or something like that. And uh, you can actually get speed loaders with them, which are kind of cool. And there's this long tube, drops them all in there at once. A lot of fun to shoot. These things are extremely reliable. They shoot really fast. There's no recoil at all. And if you stoked them up with uh, real hot little 22 um, hollow points like CCI stingers or something like that, you got 14 rounds. Holy smoke! I don't know that anybody wants to be uh, messing with you if you've got that, because every time you press the trigger, you're launching another one. You know, two, three, four rounds of that. People are going to be more interested in getting to the hospital and screwing with you. So if that's what you got, that might work pretty well. Now, inside your house, you don't have much of an over-penetration problem with a 22 long rifle. Uh, the other thing is, it's not that loud. So it's not going to make you as deaf as your 92-year-old uncle or something. And so 
that's probably pretty positive too. It's also very light. There's no recoil at all. Anybody in the family can shoot it. Uh, these are real positive little rifles to have. Now, if you're concerned about the zombie apocalypse, the other positive thing about these is you can do a little hunting with them, even in the city, and get yourself something to eat. So it's always a good idea to have a good quality 22 semi-automatic rifle. This is a really good one, a Model 60 made by Marlin. Uh, and then they all, the 1022 made by Ruger is also another good brand. Uh, and there's some other ones too. So look around if you want to get one of these. If you already have one and that's all you got, and you're a poor college student <laughs> living off top ramen and cup noodles, then you know, buy yourself some good ammunition. And if you have to defend yourself with that, it'll probably get the job done. Now, let's take a look at this. This is a Mosin Nagant or Mosin Nagant rifle. It's an old Russian rifle. Uh, these things are. Boy, I was going to say semi-indestructible. I think they're just downright indestructible. Uh, you can beat them up and do anything to them. It's just really hard to kill them. They're, uh, they're bolt action, so they're not that fast. You have to cycle the bolt each time. But they are uh, extremely powerful. They shoot the Russian version of the 30-06 cartridge, which means it hits like a train. Uh, anybody you shoot with this is probably going to put their face in the dirt. However, you do have the problem of overpenetration inside the house. These things are extraordinarily loud. And so you crank one off in your house, uh, you will be deaf as a stump for a really long time. But again, they're, right now at least, uh, during the time that we're shooting this video, they're very, very cheap to buy. They're extremely reliable. They're ugly as ugly could be, but they shoot really well. They're pretty darn accurate if you're careful about the one you buy. And uh, if you are in a place where you need one out in the woods or out in the countryside, you can reach out a long way with these things and affect something that you hit with it, reach out and touch someone. Um, so they certainly will get the job done. Are they perfect? No. Uh, they're not a perfect hunting rifle. They're too long and too heavy. They're not perfect for home defense. They're too long and too heavy and too loud and too powerful. Um, they're not perfect for the zombie apocalypse, which I want to just let you know, there's no such thing as zombies, so we're never going to have one. But if that's what you're concerned about, uh, there's not enough ammunition in them. Uh, capacity and they're too slow to reload but even though they're not perfect they're pretty darn good at just about anything so if that's what you can afford and you want to pick yourself up one uh, you probably should I did and my son did too and we have fun shooting them they're great rifles so there you go there's the most in the Gant now there's other versions of surplus bolt action uh, battle rifles from World War One World War Two that will serve the same purpose if you happen to run into one and it's in good shape you can buy it cheap probably be a good rifle for you are these perfect for self-defense? No. But again, we're practical defense systems. We realize that some people don't have much money and they got what they got. If this is what you have, practice with it. Buy some ammunition, learn to run it. You can run it and you can run it well. And when you get to that point, you can fight with it if you have to and it could save your life. Green can! No! Oh! Ow, no, it's gone can! Ow, oh, yeah! Thanks for watching this video on home defense rifles. Now don't forget to check out the previous videos on home defense shotgun, revolver, and semi-automatic pistol. And look for our next videos coming up on various different aspects of shooting, gun reviews, and so on. Oh, and like, subscribe. <laughs> I can never figure out where those are. And thank you very much for watching. By the way, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever else. Thanks. No, I'm starting to laugh. All right, now I can, I think I can do this. Okay, here we go. And handgun, both uh, rifle and, or both uh, revolver, chef, hubba hubba, hagebogemon kamoshimi kabi, wabba haba haba haba.